So now we'll start on that toolpath. We're going to go to toolpaths and we're going to pick drill. And drill wants us to select the points that we're going to drill. Now there's a bunch of different ways of picking drill points and we're going to cover all of those in a whole other chapter. Right now we're going to use the simplest way of picking a drill point which is just to pick it right off the screen. So I'm going to come over here to these circles and when I get the circle symbol for my visual cue, I'm going to pick it. And then I'll do the same thing here. When I see the center of the circle, I'll click it. So I have two selected, and we'll come over here and say OK. It shows us up here with our point geometry. We have two geometry pieces selected. They were selected from an arc. And now, here in my toolpath type, I can select the type of toolpath I want to apply to that geometry. And you can see there's a variety, but basically I just want to do the drill. Let's go take a look at our tool, and we can see our tools in the list here. I'm going to grab the spot drill, and I'm going to add a comment. And I'm going to say spot drill the tapped holes. We'll go to our cut parameters, and this is where we pick the can cycle that we're going to use. Now the default for a spot drill is to use a standard drilling or counterboring cycle. Now with most CNC controls, the difference between standard drilling and counterboring is whether or not you're using a dwell. So with no dwell value, my NC code will most likely produce a G81. If I gave it a dwell value, I'd get a G82, which is a counterboring cycle. For our linking parameters, we can tell it our retract height top of stock and our depth and if we wanted to we could use a high clearance retract and that would be if we had to jump over clamps or if we were drilling deep down inside of a pocket so my top of stock is zero I want to retract to a hundred thousandths above that now for our depth it's just going to be a spot drilling operation so what I could probably do is come over here and pick my calculator and I can use this to calculate how deep I need to go now it says that we have a three-quarter inch tool which will produce a three-quarter inch finished diameter, I'm going to tell it I want the diameter to be 0.530, 30 thousandths bigger than the diameter of the hole. Now, if I wanted to, I could add that to something that was already there, or I could just make that the overall depth. Right now, we're at zero, so it really doesn't matter. It's going to be incremental in relationship to the geometry that I picked and the geometry that I picked is right at the top of the part. So we're going to OK this. There's the depth. So at this point we can just say OK and it spot drilled our two holes. So how do we know it spot drilled those two holes? Well we can certainly watch it in backplot. I can go to backplot here and I'll just hit play. We can see it going down until it just intersects that edge of the hole. But there's another way for us to verify this. To do that, we first need to set up a stock boundary. To create a stock boundary, we go back into our machine group, expand the properties, and we go to this item that says stock setup. So with stock setup, we're actually going to define how big the stock is in X, Y, and Z. Now if you know the coordinates, you can certainly key them in here. But what's easier than that is just to select them right off the block. So I could say select corners. I can grab that corner in the upper left. And I can grab this corner in the lower right. And that gives us X, Y, and Z dimensions for our stock block. Now another possibility would be to just pick all solids and it'll look at the solid model that's on the screen and it'll automatically set the size to the extents of the solid model. Now if we wanted to leave a little extra stock on there so that we could see it rough and finish the part, I'm going to make it 4 inches 100 thousandths in X and 3 inches 100 thousandths in Y. I'm going to leave the Z the way it is. We're going to OK this and now we can see a stock block around our workpiece. And we can use that to verify what our toolpaths are going to look like. 
Now this time I'm going to come over here and click on the toolpath group heading which puts a green check in both of these file folders so both operations are selected and I'm going to come up here to verify and we're going to talk more about verify but for right now we're just going to take a look at what it's going to do so without making any adjustments just hit play and we can see the tool go around and contour the outside and we can see our spot drill spot drill those two holes